Hi everyone, welcome to this channel. In this video, I will be saying about the Wolf Visual Cycle. Wolf Visual Cycle is studied in the subject of biochemistry and the visual pathway we will study in the subject of anatomy and physiology. So don't get confused with the thing because both of the things cycle and pathway are different. So let's start with the Wolf Visual Cycle. Why Wolf Visual Cycle? Because the scientist named Wolf has discovered this cycle. For that, we say it as a world visual cycle. So, what is this? The rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is a conjugated protein present in the rod and it contains 11 cis retinal and opsin. So, let me, if I, if I draw this, then first we have rhodopsin. Rhodopsin has two things. What are the two things? 11 cis retinal and next we have the opsin. This opsin is responsible to generate the nerve impulses when exposed to light and 11 cis retinal when exposed to light it changes into 11 trans retinal. Okay, so what are the connections between this 11 cis retinal and opsin? Aldehyde group of the retinal is linked to epsilon amino group of lysine of opsin. Okay? So let's start with the step of the visual cycle. First, we'll divide it into four parts. What are the four parts? First, we'll have this as photoreceptor. Next, we'll have this here. Retinal epithelium. Epithelium. Now next here, this will occur in the blood. And next, in the liver. Okay. So first in the photoreceptor, then in the retinal epithelium then in the blood and next in the liver. So let's start with the uh, steps. First we have 11 cis retinal with us. So this when a light comes, okay, then the photoisomerization occur and visual excitation occur in which this 11 cis retinal changes into it changes into all trans retinal. Okay? 11 cis retinal changes into all trans retinal. Now then it is transferred into retinal epithelium. Okay? Here again it is transferred into epithelium. So here all trans uh, trans retinal is there. In this retinal epithelium with the help of the retinal isomerase retinal isomerase this all trans retinal is with the help of the retinal isomerase it is changed into it can change into the all cis retinal okay it can change into all cis retinal then again this all cis retinal can go in the photoreceptor then it can change into the 11 cis retinal then here it can mix with this rhodopsin and then it can give again the uh, um, with the opsin and it can give the rhodopsin so here, the whole world visual cycle is completed. Like this also it can complete. But this does not happen. Why it does not happen? Because all trans retinal does not give a complete all cis retinal. For this, again all trans retinal, it moves via blood to liver. I hope I am clear. It moves back into the liver. In the liver what it does? 
uh, it changes uh, this 11 uh, all strong ready null it changes into all trans ready null okay now what are which, which is the enzyme which changes it into null to null that is adh okay alcohol dehydrogenase with the help of conversion of nadh into nad plus in the liver so i will draw this here adh helps in this reaction uh, in the liver and where the nadh is converted into nad plus okay this is the thing all trans retinol again in the liver only with the help of the retinal isomerase of retinal isomerase of liver okay here what you can see here one more retinal isomerase of retinal epithelium it was needed now here the liver in the liver the retinal isomerase of liver it converts into again from the null group to the null group so it changes into all or uh, sorry all cis retinal okay sorry not retinal retinol it changes into retinol now it, now this all cis retinol will be converted in the liver itself into all cis retinal and who will convert this into retinol to retinol i have already said you adh adh uh, adh uh, enzyme will help in this aldehyde de alcohol dehydrogenase will help in this with the conversion of nad plus into nadh plus H plus okay there will be conversion of NADH into NADH plus H plus and here NADH will convert into NAD plus so like this the retinal is formed and again this retinal uh, all cis retinal will move and it will form by a blood and it will form all cis retinal so this is the whole cycle which occurs in the world visual cycle so this is the world visual cycle i told you next we'll move into the bleaching of rhodopsin bleaching bleaching of rhodopsin what is bleaching color of rhodopsin changes from red to yellow color when it is exposed to light so rhodopsin changes its color into uh, red from red to yellow okay by this process is known as the bleaching okay occurs in a few milliseconds and many unstable intermediates will be present okay so this rhodopsin when it converts into uh, colors in the in the, in the uh, process of bleaching at that point of time only what will happen the many intermediate unstable intermediate will be there such as first we have rhodopsin okay then rhodopsin changes into bathrodopsin okay now from here it changes into lumirodopsin from lumirodopsin it changes into metarodopsin 1 okay then next it will convert into meta rhodopsin 2 then from here there will be conversion of 11 cis retinal and opsin okay now here from here again it will move into the world visual cycle see 11 cis retinal we have then 11 cis retinal what it will convert into all, all trans retinal then this process will occur and again the rhodopsin will be formed again this opsin will mix into 11 uh, cis retinal and it will the, both of them will form the again rhodopsin will form okay this is this process is known as the bleaching of uh, rhodopsin 
Next we'll have the visual casket and CGMP. Okay, so let's we move into the visual casket and CGMP. What happens here? Rhodopsin. Rhodopsin. In many conversion, it gives the metarhodopsin to. I have already said you. It gives metarhodopsin to. Okay. Now this metarhodopsin to what it will do? It will. Um, take the transductin, sorry, transducin. Transducin, you know, it is a G protein. So, transducin will present in the active form. From this transducin, it will, it will take the metarhodopsin and it will convert into its, uh, it, it, will, uh, it will be present in the inactive form and it will cause the active form of transducin. So, transducin will be present in its active form after taking the metarhodopsin uh, 2. Now here this transducin again it will convert it will be uh, it will convert the uh, phosphodiesterase phosphodiesterase inactive form into its active form. Okay it will change this into its active form. So phosphodiester is inactive form. After taking transduction active form, it changes into uh, active form of trans uh, phosphodiesterase. Now again, phosphodiesterase, what it will do? It will take tri the three prime five prime CGMP and it converts into five prime CGMP. So this is the whole steps of the visual casket and the CGMP in which the CGMP is converted, 3 prime, 5 prime CGMP is converted into 5 prime of CGMP with the help of the metarhodopsin 2 with this series of reactions. Now, there is an important explain why question. What is an explain why? That is dark adaptation time. We have seen that after moving um, from a bright light to a darker room such as cinema hall or anywhere in your room which is darker point, uh, um, uh, temporary blindness occur. So, what is that? That is the dark adaptation time. When we stay from a bright sunlight into a darkened room, into a dim cinema theater, a temporary blindness occur. Okay, we we all have faced this situation that there is a temporary um, blindness. In a darkened room, vision can only be supplied by the dots since they have a greater sensitivity than cones. So, in the darker light, which gives us the sensation, rod cells in the retina. During the exposure to the bright light, rhodopsin of the rods are completely activated and cannot respond fully again until it is restored to the original state, which takes a few minutes. For that only, we have a temporary blindness for a minute. This is the reason why vision is impaired upon entering a darkened room. However, within a few minutes, known as the dark adaptation time, rhodopsin regains its resting state which can respond to the dim light. Okay, this is known as the dark adaptation time. Means the time which is taken by the rocks to get activated in a uh, uh, dark room. Okay, so in the vitamin A deficiency patient, those who are having the vitamin A deficiency, in that patient, this dark adaptation time will uh, be more okay and in a normal person dark adaptation time is very less so dark adaptation time it is important explain why it may ask they may ask you that what happens why there is a temporary blindness when you enter into a darker room uh, before uh, after coming from a bright light so this may be an important explain why question okay so whatever i have taught you uh, from here this uh, cgmp path uh, this dark adaptation time and from here the world visual cycle and the bleaching process. I hope everything is clear to you. So do share, like and comment below and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching. Do follow for all this drawing in my Instagram page. Thank you.